Hola, muchas gracias por acompañarnos en esta 35 quinta edición del Festival de Cine de Mar del Plata, que en esta oportunidad nos encuentra frente a las pantallas, eh, con el ánimo de continuar esta comunidad que año a año es el festival, eh, organizamos esta conversación junto a Radu Yude y a Adrián Choflanca, directores de, de Exit of the Trains, desde Rumania contamos con con la suerte de que Radu y Adrián nos acompañan. Hola Radu, hola Adrián. Hello. Eh, Hi. Fine. Actually, I'm uh, I'm very moved by this meeting, uh, and I want to make a, a small confession. When I was a teenager, around 15 years old, I uh, I had a book about the Romanian uh, filmmaker, uh, which is was a great master. He died, unfortunately, two years ago, Lucian Pintilie. And on the list of uh, Lucian Pintilie's films, it was mentioned that his first feature was screened uh, somewhere in the 60s in Mar del Plata Film Festival. So this is where the first uh, time in my life uh, the, the name of the Mar del Plata Festival appeared. And it remained like, uh, like uh, something uh, very dreamy, very utopical and now to, 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 to have my film screened there already a few times it was very moving all the time and now to have this discussion even if only on the internet is uh, for me it means a lot. Bueno, para nosotros es un gusto, por supuesto, contar con, con esta película como parte de la programación para los espectadores habituales del festival. Eh, tanto el nombre de Radu como de Adrián eh, no son una novedad. Eh, afortunadamente sus últimas películas se han exhibido en el festival. Y especialmente dos trabajos precedentes a The Exit of the Trains que, que fueron de, de de The Nation y I Don't Care y Fui Gotan in History of the Variants, que formaron parte de las ediciones anteriores del festival y que de alguna forma los encontró trabajando en colaboración. Eh, sobre esto, bueno, un poco me, me interesaba indagar como en, en el proceso de trabajo de esta película en particular, que retoma desde un lugar temático, tal vez el, el, el trabajo con, con esta memoria del, del holocausto rumano, o la participación de Rumania dentro del holocausto, y me parece también que es un trabajo muy patente sobre el, sobre el uso un poco de la imagen y muchas veces, como estos procesos históricos, eh, eh, digamos, el, 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 la información que muchas veces tenemos son números y no tenemos rostros, no tenemos relatos. Eh, entonces sobre eso y, y particularmente sobre un proyecto que también estaba llevando a cabo Adrián, una investigación, me interesaba como indagar en esta génesis de, de la película a partir de, de pensar digamos, esos números eh, y esos nombres con, con esos relatos y esos rostros que los acompañan. The exact title of the movie is uh, I don't care if you go down in history as bar bar barbarians. So this is a saying belonging to the vice uh, prime minister of Romania, um, the head of a fascist government, uh, which decided to go uh, into war along uh, Um, Nazi Germany in 1941 uh, to get back some provinces they lost in uh, one year before in favor of uh, the Soviet Union, but they used the opportunity to uh, provoke ethnic cleansing and to kill uh, uh, most of the Jews they encountered during the military operation. So this is, uh, this is the source of the, of the title. Uh, the film uh, refers to a massacre w which took place in uh, Odessa in October 1941. No, Adrian, uh, uh, the question was about our film, actually. Well, I, I got it. I got it. Okay. Um, so we, we started to work for this, uh, the, the, for the film I mentioned. Um, and the... Um, That happened like Adrian was the uh, Adrian was the consultant, our historical consultant for the Barbarians film. This is why he he started from there. Sorry. Okay. And um, from that point on, uh, we discussed the idea to make a film uh, uh, about the Yash program, uh, starting uh, uh, from uh, some material I found uh, on uh, different archives, uh, namely photos of victims. 
of the Yash pogrom. Th that was the uh, first uh, largest massacre of the uh, of the Barbarossa operation in 1941. Uh, so uh, uh, one week after the war started, uh, uh, the Romanian authorities started to kill uh, Jews, and they killed more than 10,000 Jews in. Uh, Yash, which is an important uh, city in north uh, eastern Romania, and um, uh, this this massacre is uh, uh, well researched, but uh, we don't know uh, details about victims. And this film is about victims, and uh, we started uh, 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 working for the film by using the photos, collecting photos from different archives, and uh, even from eBay. Uh, I bought an uh, album with uh, um, uh, portraits of victims uh, from eBay, a uh, collectioner from uh, um, Israel uh, sold it, and uh, we, we started to reconstruct biographies uh, relating to the photos in the albums and other, other persons uh, uh, from different uh, archives. Actually, I think Adrian is a little bit modest here because um, he's a historian and I'm a filmmaker, I'm not a historian. And I think this uh, film, which is more like a document than a film itself, uh, relies on his shoulder and it was his proposal at some point. And relies on his work because uh, not only he found uh, photographs of the people who were uh, eventually killed, but uh, he amassed an impressive uh, archive. Uh, uh, he copied all the documents he could found. I, I, I think there are hundreds of thousands of, uh, of files in, in his archive and he had the patience and uh, you know, used the software to match uh, because that was the idea of the film. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's the cinematic idea, so to speak, to match the names and to find a, a story for each one. Sometimes one line, sometimes two lines, sometimes one page. And the, in this way, to to give a face somehow to 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 the victims, because usually this kind of of horrific events goes becomes very much abstractions, like uh, one thousand people killed, uh, eight thousand, you know, Srebrenica, uh, all this kind. It's nothing. But when you see on the screen in, in our film, which is actually very long and very dry, there are two hundred. Around 200 photos, or around 200 photos of, of victims, 120, I think, and you imagine that it was more than 10,000. And actually, what we have on screen is not even, not even uh, five percent of the of the whole number. You, you you can have maybe an idea of of uh, of the the monstrosity. If you take a look on professional websites uh, of um research institutions like the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum or Yad Vashem. Uh, when you go to the section uh, of victims of the Yash pogrom, you can find many photos with names, but no stories, no individual uh, uh, stories, no biographies. Uh, uh, some of the <laughs> photos we used in the film uh, were included in different exhibitions. Uh, and uh, they were part of the public discourse in Romania, but uh, actually nobody cared to uh, attach a story to the face. And that was uh, part, of the, part of the work for this film, and which is a, a very long film. It, it takes three hours. Uh, but on, on the other side, as Radu said, um, we'll have in this very long documentary, the story of... Uh, 200 persons only. Uh, so, uh, and sometimes we have only one phrase about a person. Uh, and this is a, a, actually a story about what remains out of us from history. Sometimes uh, uh, very little and uh, sometimes nothing. Because in the case of uh, other uh, 400 uh, photos uh, for which we have uh, names, we don't have stories at all. And uh, we don't have the names. We have names for uh, three thousand victims of the Ash program, but not for the rest, for seven thousand and so on. So this is um, a, a discussion and reflection 
on uh, what remains out of a massacre of a uh, of a disaster like that and uh, what uh, what can we speak about uh, um, individual stories and uh, human dignity uh, after so many years algo que me interesaba también conversar eh, tiene que ver un poco con quienes narran eh, digamos eh, esas historias quiénes son los sobrevivientes no y muchas de esos relatos son narrados por mujeres, eh, se intuyen que son sus parejas, sus hijas, eh, ¿no? como bueno, quienes, quienes estaban del otro lado, y, 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 y también los detalles a veces de, de, de ese horror, ¿no? a veces digamos, la información es, es muy concisa, y en otros, en otros momentos, en otros pasajes de la película, eh, ese, ese, ese horror, ese, ese, ese detalle resulta aterrador, me interesaba cómo, cómo confluyen, digamos, esa, esas, esas informaciones, ¿no? Desde los testimonios, cómo, cómo fue esa pesquisa de encontrar esos testimonios. Sé que hicieron un trabajo como, como muy exhaustivo en, en, en el lugar. Uh, this uh, massacre, uh, the authorities targeted, targeted mostly uh, adult men, uh, and actually men. So they killed, uh, because that was the philosophy Uh, of the fascist government at that time to target uh, mostly uh, those considered dangerous for the uh, authorities, uh, in this case, uh, uh, adult, uh, adult men. And they, they rounded up and killed in the end uh, uh, most of the Jewish men from uh, this uh, city. And this is why we have testimonies mostly from widows and from daughters and from sons uh, and sometimes from witnesses. Well, when the details are frightening, uh, this is the case of uh, witness um, uh, uh, declarations because they saw with their own eyes what happened. In other cases, uh, the widows only uh, found vaguely about what happened to their uh, husbands uh, or brothers and uh, so on. Uh, and these um, testimonies were collected after the war uh, and they are um, in different archives in Romania, in Jerusalem, in, in Washington and other places. Um, and it, it took a lot of, of time to put them uh, together and to Uh, organize them as a, a database. Uh, after that, uh, the Romanian authorities started to kill entire families uh, and entire communities, uh, uh, starting with July and uh, the autumn of 1941. But this is a reflection of the first phase of the Holocaust when they killed mostly men. And this is why you have the stories of uh, widows and uh, women. Uh, and uh, It's, it's also important to notice that the sufferings went also to, to women, not only to men, because they remained to, to take care of the family uh, in a very patriarchic, patriarchal society. And uh, it was very difficult. They were targeted by the authorities and um, um, they had no money and they were harassed by the authorities and so on. One of, the, one of the weirdest questions that we had when we premiered the film in Forum in, uh, in Berlinale was from someone who implied uh, why there's so, such a gender imbalance uh, in the victims. <laughs> so I, I didn't expect to hear, to hear a question like that. And so rather, I read, rather well, said that uh, the result of this imbalance uh, is, uh, is actually uh, the action of the perpetrators They yes and yes yeah, yes but, but i think it was really weird or something like that why 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 is this gender imbalance why not so also women being killed sí también de alguna forma lo que asombra es las profesiones eran digamos eh, trabajadores digamos no no eh, el, 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 digamos parte como de esa sociedad eh, quiénes eran las víctimas, ¿no? hombres comunes la mayoría de las veces. Algo que me interesaba también conversar tenía que ver con que, bueno, por momentos, digamos, la, la película, digamos, en su forma, digamos, tiene, digamos, trabaja a partir de cierta repetición de un procedimiento que tiene que ver con, 
con visualizar esas imágenes, imágenes de pasaportes, imágenes de retratos, a veces, eh, digamos, ese contraste que, que, que tienen algunos rostros de, a media sonrisa. Eh, me interesaba también conversar un poco como en estos momentos en que la, como el negro cubre la pantalla y, y escuchamos, eh, escuchamos un testimonio que, que nos invita un poco como a imaginar, ¿no? Como, como está, pensar la palabra imaginar, eh, como, como la idea de hacer un re, como una imagen mental, ¿no? Eh, como esa decisión de alguna forma, eh, por qué la tomaron o, o creyeron que era necesaria generar como esa pausa en, en, en esa superposición de imágenes. Well, actually there was a... <coughs> the film is composed uh, in two parts. One part is uh, mostly, as we spoke, the photos of the victims prior to, 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 to the massacre and uh, texts uh, related to their fate. Uh, but we also found uh, texts like, like witness uh, testimonies that didn't have, uh, that spoke a little bit more about what happened in those uh, trains of death and in the massacre, that we couldn't relate them to somebody specific. But we felt that it is important to have these testimonies as well as part of, of the film, even without being related to, to a person or another specifically. And this is why we also um, wanted to have them only as, uh, as a sound, as, a, as somebody reading the testimony. And then uh, we, I think we tried several versions with photographs, without photographs, and then we decided to keep it on, on the black because it was the most simple uh, device and the, the film is extremely simple even uh, too simple for for some uh, some people who would expect more um, but we felt that also this uh, this is not only an ethical thing of not uh, representing what it's impossible to represent or, or very difficult to represent but also to to leave uh, the, the viewer Imagine, actually, all the film works on the imagination of the viewer more than, than a regular film because you see photographs, you don't see the people moving. So everything that, uh, that, uh, that is uh, cinematic, it's more in the montage, in the, uh, in the juxtaposition of the, of the cases, of the images, of the, of the photographs, uh, in the juxtaposition of the photographs with the sound. And this creates... Uh, uh, or should create, or we hope we create, it, it creates a mental image uh, in the viewer. But also all this big part, this first part with the testimonies and with the witness accounts and these photographs, is we juxtapose it with the second part, which is shorter, and we have the photos of the actual massacre, and I will invite uh, Adrian to, to talk about the source of these photographs because it's interesting who made it. And actually, uh, we discussed a lot if we to, to have these photographs of the massacre in film or not, if it's ethical to have them or not. And of course, there's a long debate here. There's books written about it, starting with, uh, I don't know, or ending with Susan Sontag regarding the pain of others and uh, uh, Lanzmann, Claude Lanzmann saying you, 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 we shouldn't use archive and so on and so forth. But in the end, the actual reason that we use those photographs, even if it's an ethical, problem or, or, or ethically it's not, uh, it, it remains questionable, was more for the negationists. Because there are a lot of people in Romania, especially who are negating uh, the, the, the event, the, the massacre itself. And it, it's like, although maybe it wouldn't be efficient for this kind of people, but at least it's like having a proof that what is in the first part, the witness accounts and the, 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 the stories, the, the information about uh, the massacre, uh, like, like people used to say usually, but I don't believe this. Well, then in the second part, which is, uh, as I said, shorter, and it's shorter because we put the, the photographs as short as possible only to give the information, not to let the, the viewer contemplate them as artistical objects. Uh, in the, so in the second part, we have the proof that what, what was heard back then existed. And it also, you can compare two, because the film also speaks about representation. You can compare two different modes of representation. One, using only the imagination, only the, 
the words and witness uh, from witness accounts and the second one using only images put in together and uh, put it together and no text. So the previous documentaries about the Yash pogrom uh, relied mostly on uh, the photos we used in the last section. But uh, we consider them as part of the problem of the way we represent the Yash pogrom. The fact that we uh, focus so much on uh, numbers and uh, uh, these global images were with no identity for victims. Uh, so we excluded, uh, we, we, uh, we, in our story, we put them in, in the end. Uh, as Radu said, as a sort of a conclusion or confirmation of what happened. But on the other side, we excluded the narrator uh, and uh, we uh, uh, took our film out of the approach which, which used a sort of a master narrative, uh, a story, uh, a usual, the usual story about the Yash pogrom you can find in other uh, documentaries about the Yash pogrom, because this film is about victims and we uh, prefer the perspective from below, uh, starting for, uh, from what the victims perceived, uh, who uh, didn't it's, it's, figure it's, out it's, what happened. It's interesting uh, maybe to mention who made the photographs of the massacre because it's not very usual. <laughs> I, I will I will mention it, but uh, I want to uh, finish this idea that we started from below, and uh, actually we included the viewer in this perspective of the victims because the viewer has to put details uh, together to uh, um, uh, understand the matter narrative of the of the massacre, what uh, happened in the first place, putting together all these details. And um, um, in the case of the photos we used in the last uh, section, they were um, uh, made mostly by uh, Germans uh, or by Romanian secret services. But this is sure that they were made by perpetrators and uh, they were made for different uh, um, purposes. Um, some of them had fun uh, doing these photos, uh, some uh, consider them part of the mission. Uh, some uh, wanted to brag to their relatives and friends uh, with uh, these uh, terrible uh, images uh, uh, and so on. Um, and actually, in a way, this is the luck of the historians and uh, for uh, us, because we have an instrument to represent better uh, what we read in documents, uh, because f uh, taking photographs in Yash at that time was strictly prohibited. Uh, and uh, the army and the police controlled very strictly the process. Uh, so nobody was allowed to take photos, but they couldn't control the German soldiers, the uh, Allied army. And uh, this is why we have more than uh, 100 uh, photos with different scenes uh, from the, uh, during the events. Uh, and those are included, most of them are included in the last section of our film. Recordaba que en un momento, digamos, una de uno de estos testimonios, alguien, alguien dice, bueno, esta es mi, es mi declaración firmada con mi huella, un poco esto que, que enunciaba Radu sobre bueno, este testimonio en primera persona no es suficiente, bueno, veamos estas imágenes. Pensaba un poco también en, sobre, este última, sobre esta última, que funciona tal vez como un apéndice, una segunda parte funciona tal vez como un apéndice, eh, pensaba también en la duración de esas imágenes, son, eh, digamos, es, funcionan un poco por acumulación, pero no, no duran tanto tiempo, digamos, algo de esto que planteaban un poco en relación a cierta ética de las imágenes tiene que ver Con, con el tiempo que están esas imágenes en pantalla, me refiero a las de la segunda parte. Como si estetizar un poco ese horror eh, sea algo que, que, que esté un poco en las antípodas de esta película. As I said before, I think that when, when an image uh, 
of all kind, but especially when another another type of image, not a cinematic image, image, not an image that moves, is on the screen, even if it's a drawing or a photograph or something like that, puts the viewer uh, automatically in the position of contemplating it. Of, uh, or, or at least this is, as I, I felt as a viewer, whenever photographs appear on the screen or a painting or something, you start to look at it. And um, actually our first cut, I think this part was much longer. I think it's now around 15 minutes and I think it was uh, 30 or 35 or 40 minutes before because we kept the photos long. And uh, at some point we discussed and we decided that it's wrong because uh, it, it really, they should see, they should be seen only for their, their documentary quality, for the, uh, let's say, the information they bring uh, and the, the, the way they show uh, things, but not to, to be longer in order to be contemplated. Maybe they should have been even shorter. I don't know. And, um, you know, there is a long discussion uh, uh, in the the field of Holocaust studies, but also in the uh, in those who study uh, the photographies of atrocities. And there is the bad fame of uh, the act of regarding this type of photos. Uh, it's uh, also uh, a bad fame of the uh, endeavor of using the photos in uh, uh, in books or exhibitions, because uh, some used to say, and Susan Zontag says that in the, on uh, uh, photography, uh, on uh, his uh, her um, uh, essay on photography, but changes her opinion uh, in the other book in regarding the pain of others. Uh, she said that this is a little bit voyeuristic and sadistic to take such a long. Uh, look on the uh, uh, photographies of atrocities. Uh, using in our film these type of photos, we operate a, a sort of inversion of the status of the viewer because uh, uh, so you don't have uh, an ethical strain when you take a look on faces of victims. Uh, so what our film tries to do is to, to provoke this inversion because this time looking at sufferance and uh, being patient to take a look for three hours uh, to these stories is a, a sort of uh, uh, an act of respect towards the victims and also an act of courage because you, you, uh, you confront this, uh, this horror, this uh, traumatic effect of all these details and you find about uh, uh, something which otherwise is uh, very difficult to perceive. Uh, I was uh, also would like to mention uh, two, two things that uh, one uh, Romanian film critic at uh, the Berlinale where the film premiered uh, wrote a kind of review saying, uh, look, I, um, um, the film, uh, she de described how the film is done. And in the end she said, uh, I would, uh, what, mi what misses is the, I would like to see also the other perspective. And uh, well, I think it's not a very innocent thing to say because in the case of a massacre like that, I mean, what's to be said? What's, what's the, what would be the use to make, uh, to have the other so-called audiator et altera parts here? We, of course, we are not making a trial film. The things are, are settled. It's like a more, more, more like a memory and like a history, film, a film on history. Uh, but uh, to be out completely honest, we tried at some point to, to make, and we did uh, a part of it until we abandoned a film uh, about the perpetrator, perpetrators of this um, uh, massacre. And, and the reason we stopped was to, to actually we, we have two reasons, sorry, if I remember well. One was the fact that we said uh, it's really ugly to make a film only to put somebody on the screen and say, look, he's guilty. Uh, that was one thing. The other thing that I found really, really uh, repulsive, and this is why we actually we stopped, it was that some of the photographs of these people were from the communist prisons 
because after the 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 the, the fall of the fascist regime, uh, Romania started a, a, a Soviet communist dictatorship, so so to speak, of, of Soviet origin, and uh, many of these people were condemned to to prison. But the prison regime was not like in a democratic country. It was an, a, another type of extermination uh, uh, regime for many of them, and the photos of these perpetrators were their faces were, was, were so full of suffering uh, that, you know, you, you, you started to feel pity about them. And for good reasons, in a way, because those people were not kept in human conditions or treated humanly. And, uh, and uh, for this reason, we stopped. Sadu y Adrián, eh, les agradecemos mucho la conversación, la generosidad por exponer este proceso de trabajo por, por reflexionar sobre este trabajo con las imágenes. Nuevamente, muchas gracias por compartir su película en el festival, eh, parte de todo el equipo de trabajo, les agradecemos mucho, y bueno, esperamos sus próximas películas en, en, en nuestro festival. Eh, gracias también a los espectadores, y bueno, si quieren a, agregar algo más o, o despedirse, este es el momento. Well, thank you so much once more for, for inviting the film. It's really a great honor and it's not polite to say that. I, I, I really mean it. And uh, well, that's it. And thank you for the conversation. <laughs> thank you very much. It was a pleasure.